everybody, it's Ms. Phoebus, and this is lesson 39, solving quadratics by completing the square. Hey guys, we are building off of what we did yesterday, so I just want to make sure that you are good on the homework. So if you have any questions, please, please, please make sure you email me about completing the square. Now, I do want to tell you, I talked to the class that was in the room um, yesterday, there are some IXL extra credit points that you can get. Um, you need to click on the um, calendar that I have on the home screen and there is a little kind of thin uh, hexagon shape. It's kind of long and it says IXL bonus points and if you click on your class it'll take you to um, a page where you have five IXL skills that you can try out and you can get, if you get it up to a 90% um, in that skill, then I will give you two bonus points, two bonus test points per skill that you can bring up to 90%. And those five skills for the week are already chosen for you. They are on that special page. So you have to get there by clicking on the calendar, that planner, well, it's not the planner, but it's the, the one where um, it has the days of the week and the things that we're doing in there. Um, click on that and if you're having trouble finding it, let me know. I also emailed you um, or I had IXL email you your um, username and password and you probably need to change your password so you want to try to log in because everybody has the same password. So try to log in, get in there, play around. If you have any questions, let me know. That uh, this week's um, bonus points will run out on Sunday night and then there will be a new set so don't try to finish this week's IXL on you know Monday night of next week because it's not going to work okay um, don't come crawling to me going what kind of extra credit can I do and you've been ignoring the IXL as well so we are reviewing some old concepts um, through IXL and um, sometimes it won't be an algebra one concept sometimes it'll be an algebra two concept just because like average rate of change for some reason IXL thinks that that's algebra two but we're doing it in algebra one so don't be like weirded out by the fact that you might end up in an algebra two concept all right let's start this lesson so by the end of this lesson you should be able to identify the zeros of a quadratic equation by completing the square and be able to transform our equation so that it will match this x minus p squared um, equals q match this form so you will have to do one of two things and this involves I know this is a shocker reading the instructions you have to know how far do you have to take it is your job just to rewrite it so it matches that form that's in the red box or is your job to complete the square those are the two pieces that you are trying to figure out and then you're kind of doing the same work it just depends on do you stop early or do you have to keep following through and then um, just like yesterday we will be completing the square to rewrite in a different form we will be completing the square to solve quadratic equations and then later on there is a process that involves completing the square to see zeros we're actually going to do it a little bit of a different way I will show you the completing the square aspect of it but I think that there's a little bit easier of a way to do that all right, we're going to be on page 172 in the notes if you're following along with us. And on page 172, we have solving equations by using completing the square. So we're going to fill in some blanks. So here we go. Step A, move the constant to the other side of the equal sign. So we're going to move the constant, get it out of the way. Then we're going to complete the square by adding our b divided by 2 squared to both sides. That's what we used yesterday to complete the square. You're going to rewrite the left-hand side as a perfect square binomial. And then you're going to simplify the other side. So usually you're going to be adding two numbers together on the right-hand side. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus and then solve for x. So that is how to solve by using uh, completing the square. 
the um, piece where it's just rewrite, so if you, it just says rewrite as x uh, minus p squared equals q, would have you stop here. You would not keep going. So it depends on are you solving for x or are you just trying to rewrite it with completing the square. And so you've got to get used to the feel for those two different ideas. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to, on these first three, we are going to do the rewrite portion. And we are going to make sure that it looks like that, I'll write it right here, x minus p squared, sometimes there's a plus in there, equals q. Okay, that's the goal for 1, 2, and 3. Now, 4, 5, and 6, we're going to do that, but then we're going to take it a couple steps further. We're going to solve for x, okay, so that you kind of get the idea of what's going on. So we are, there's no instructions here. We are saying for 1, 2, and 3, we're going to get this rewritten, and then for 4, 5, and 6, we will actually progress past that and solve. Again, you have to understand what the directions are asking you to do. If I'm just like, rewrite this, and I give you that example, then you need to stop earlier than if I say solve by completing the square. Now, one, two, look pretty good. Look at number three. Remember that I told you that A, the number in front of the x squared, the leading coefficient, will never be anything other than 1. So we definitely need to move that negative x squared to the other side. So I'm dealing with a positive x squared. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add x squared to both sides over here. So we have x squared plus 18x plus 12 equals 0. Okay? So in that case, there might be something other than a 1, but that's designed for you to move it to get things on the right hand side or in this case the left hand side okay so here we go we're going to look at number one and the very first step is to move the constant so I am going to add 42 to the other side now when we do this I'm going to have you use some blanks okay these are patent pending Phoebus blanks. You ready? So we're going to have x squared minus 4x. Now technically these two cancel each other out. There's nothing there, right? But we know that to complete the square, what we did yesterday was we had to add a constant to both sides. So I want you to put a blank after your b value, your bx, and then 0 plus 42 is 42, and then I want you to put another plus blank. Okay, the idea is we want some space to add something to both sides because we know we have to complete the square. Now, because I have that space there, that means I have to fill it in with something. And so that goes back to what we talked about yesterday. How do you complete the square? Well, you take the b value, you divide it by 2, and you square it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our b value, which is negative 4. We're going to take negative 4 divided by 2, and we're going to square that, which is negative 2 squared, which is 4. So this 4 goes here and here. Why does it go on both sides? Well, I need it to complete the square in that blank on the left. And if I add it to the blank on the left to keep the equation balanced, I have to add it to the blank on the right. So I want to keep that equation balanced. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to turn this into our parentheses squared. Again, something that we did in the assignment yesterday, the lesson yesterday, and the assignment last night. So we want to rewrite this as x with something squared. The question is, what goes in there? And I like, I'm a personal fan of grabbing this and pulling this down here, x minus 2 x minus 2, and then we're going to have that squared equals, and then what goes on the other equal sign is we're going to put these guys together. 42 plus 4 is 46. And so here is that x, I think I have it, plus or minus p squared equals q. 
So this piece is actually negative, right? We don't need that. And this piece is this. Okay, they don't have to be the same number. That's why P and Q are different. That is the answer that x minus 2, all of it squared, equals 46. That's it. All right, so let's do it again. Let's do number two. I'm going to get rid of this part of the box because we don't need that anymore. And so what we're going to do is we've got to move the constant. That's step number one. So let's move the constant. I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. And so I have x squared plus 8x plus blank patent pending equals negative 7 plus blank. All right. So I've got my spots ready. I'm ready to fill in with completing the square. So how do we start finding the blanks? What goes in the blanks? We do b divided by 2 squared. And then we're going to have 8 divided by 2, because that's our b value, is 8 squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. Remember, we got to keep that equation balanced. That's why there's blank, blanks on both sides. All right, so now we are going to rewrite this as something squared. So I've got my parentheses, x, I like to borrow this, x plus 4 squared equals, and then what is negative 7 plus 16? ready. It's ready to be solved, but remember on the first three, we're just going to rewrite so it matches that form that keeps popping up with the p's and the q's. All right, let's look at number three. Now, we had already moved the x squared, so now we have to move the constant. So we're going to subtract 12 on both sides, and then we're going to have x squared plus 18x plus blank equals, that's going to be negative 12 plus blank. All right, how are we going to figure out what goes in the blanks? B divided by 2 squared. So B is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So we're going to add 81 to both sides. All right, we're going to change this piece to that binomial squared x plus 9 squared equals, and let's see, 81 minus 12 is 69. Okay, so x squared, x plus 9 squared equals 69. All right, so those we just stopped early on. On the next three, we're going to keep going. Now, the nice thing about four and five is that the constants are already moved over. So all we have to do is we have to figure out what to add to both sides. So we're going to do b divided by 2 squared, so that we're looking at 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 squared is 64. We're going to add 64 to both sides. How you doing? Got this? All right, I'm going to rewrite this piece as a parenthesis squared. So I'm going to have x plus 8 squared equals I'm going to combine those and get a 50. Now, if we were just rewriting, we'd stop here. But we are not just rewriting. We're going to solve for x. So now we have to think back to what we did on Friday. How do I make a square go away? We have to take the square root of both sides. So that'll be x plus 8 equals plus or minus. I think we can break down 50. 50 is 5 and 10. 10. 5 and 2. I have a pair of 5s. They get to go outside the radical. Square root 2. 
Okay, so that breaks up the radical. And then I've got to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 8. So I'm going to have x equals negative 8 plus or minus 5 square roots of 2. And that's my answer. So remember, it's all about how far do you have to take it. It means you have to read the directions and know what does solving by completing the square mean and what does rewrite using completing the square mean. All right, let's look at number five. Okay, so we've got, we've already got our constant moved over, so we're going to have x squared plus 5x plus blank equals negative 3 plus blank. We are going to take our b value, divide it by 2, and then square it. So we've got 5 divided by 2 squared, which is going to be 25 over 4. Now, the, the uh, thing to worry about is on that right hand side we have to uh, have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and change this negative 3 to give it a common denominator of 4. So it's going to be negative 12 fourths because negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. So that's going to help me combine those in the next move. Alright, we're going to rewrite this as x plus 5 over 2 squared. And I got that 5 over 2 right there. Hold it in. Equals, all right, so what's negative 12 plus 25? 13 over 4. Okay, so all I did was I combined those into our 13 fourths. And then now we're going to solve. So we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. And remember that when we do this, the fraction, we're going to have a plus or minus the square root of 13. Now, the square root of, over the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And then I've got one more step. I'm going to get rid of that plus 5 over, two, 5 over 2. I'm going to subtract 5 over 2 on both sides. So I'm going to have x equals negative 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. What do you think? Yeah, it's got some fractions. But I don't think we did anything too terribly hard. All right, let's look at number six. Now, number six, we want that x squared to be positive. So I want to keep it. I mean, if you want to rewrite it, we could do that. I didn't even think about that. We could rewrite it completely. We would want the 2x to come over here, and we want the negative 7 to come over here. So we can have our constant on the right. We need our 2x on the left. So that would mean we need x squared minus 2x plus blank to equal, add that 7 to that 3 equals 10. Let's figure out what to add to both sides. So we're going to take b, divide it by 2, and then square it. So our b value is negative 2, and divide that by 2, and then square it. So negative 1 squared is 1. We're going to add 1 to both sides. I forgot my other blank. Oh no! All right, so add one to both sides. We're going to rewrite this piece. So that's going to be x minus 1 squared. Remember, I stole it from here. And then 10 plus 1 is 11. All right, let's take the square root of both sides. x minus 1 equals, don't forget your plus or minus. 11 isn't going to break down. And then we're going to add 1, so I'm going to come over here. x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 11. What do you think? All right, that's the, the two different forms. And again, you have to read the instructions. Are you being asked to solve by completing the square? Or are you asked to rewrite something into a different format by completing the square? 
or are you being asked to, what do you add to both sides to complete the square? I mean, it just kind of depends, but completing the square should be in there. Otherwise, probably not the best way to get an answer. I have a better way, and I'm excited to share that with you on Thursday and Friday. Now, on Friday, there is another quiz. So just keep that in mind that all of our solving things, I want to see how it's going. So we're going to be solving by factoring, by graphing, by taking the square roots, by completing the square. I don't think our last method is going to be on there because it's going to be way brand new. But we are going to have some of this coming up on Friday. So just keep in mind that I want you to, to go through, definitely use your notes on this. Okay, you're going to be all right. Just make sure you're following your steps. Practice, practice, practice. Let me know if you have any questions, all right? I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.